Hey guys, it's Carol. Welcome back to my, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's for you. El Salvador is calling. This beautiful paradise is quickly making big waves in the travel world and it's no surprise why. From stunning volcanoes and gorgeous beaches to charming towns and vibrant cities, El Salvador has it all. Get ready for year-round sunshine, amazing adventures, and the friendliest people you'll ever meet. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for part two of my El Salvador travel tips and frequently asked questions. What to do while in El Salvador. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Carol. I'm originally from California, but 14 years ago, I moved to El Salvador to be with my amazing Salvadoran husband, Carlos, and grow our family here. In part one, we talked about what to know before visiting El Salvador in regards to money, language, safety, packing tips, and so much more. So if you haven't seen it yet, I'll go ahead and link it up above as well as down below in the description box. In part two, we are gonna deep dive into what's important to know while visiting El Salvador, and we're going to start at the airport. What are El Salvador's travel entry requirements? Exciting news for travelers worldwide. El Salvador warmly welcomes visitors from 86 jurisdictions without needing a visa. So whether you're from the US, Canada, the European Union, or anywhere else, you can discover the beauty of El Salvador for up to 180 days visa free. Just arrive with a valid passport and get a tourist card on entry. Currently priced at $12 and valid for a six month stay. It's that easy. Wondering if your country needs a visa? Check with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I'll link them down below in the description box. It is important to note that many airlines will require you to have a ticket back home when coming to El Salvador. Many will not let you enter with only a one-way ticket. This is not an El Salvador requirement, but many of the airlines require it in the off chance that El Salvador denies you entry. Let's talk tattoos. Despite recent rumors, tattoos are not illegal in El Salvador. In fact, I got mine here. I know it's tiny, but my aunt's tattoos are not tiny. And she's visited El Salvador six times so far. And the only issue she's had is having so many people stop her on the streets to compliment her beautiful tattoos. What are illegal are tattoos associated with gangs or terrorist organizations. And not just locally here in El Salvador, but globally recognized. So if you're curious if your tattoos fall in that category, a quick Google search would be beneficial. And if you need help with your luggage, you can flag down one of the many friendly airport workers waiting to assist you with luggage carts in hand. Just remember to tip them a dollar or two afterwards for their assistance. It is important to note that while many TSA officers and immigration assistants will be able to communicate with you in English, the official language of El Salvador is Spanish. So not everyone at the airport will speak English. How do I use my cell phone in El Salvador? It's important to stay connected while traveling abroad. And while Wi-Fi may be readily available at your hotel or your Airbnb, it's not widely available while out and about in El Salvador. So it is crucial to have a plan for your cell phone to stay connected. And the easiest way to do that is through Arilo, an eSIM provider and today's sponsor. eSIM stands for Embedded SIM, or simply put, it's an eco-friendly digital version of a physical SIM card. It lets you change your wireless provider, data, or service plan directly through the app on the phone. Eliminating the need to try to find a local SIM card vendor at the airport and juggle multiple physical SIM cards, or worrying about being hit with hefty international roaming charges while traveling abroad. It's happened to the best of us. Arilo is the world's first eSIM store, trusted by more than 10 million travelers worldwide. With Arilo, you can download and install a digital data pack from over 200 countries and regions directly on your phone. No need for a physical SIM card, making it easy to stay connected. Simply download the Arilo app, Choose your country. El Salvador, of course. Select your eSIM plan, making sure to use my code, thatexpatmom, to get $3 off your purchase and install over Wi-Fi. And then just turn on your eSIM when you arrive at your destination and you're instantly connected. Using Arilo here in El Salvador during your travels will make staying connected simply 
effortless. Say adios to searching for spotty Wi-Fi, managing physical SIM cards, or racking up international roaming fees. Stay connected without the hassle. Install Aerolo today so you can stay connected anywhere you travel. And use my code, that expat mom, to get $3 off your data plan. The link and the code are down below in the description box, as well as the pinned comment. How do I get around El Salvador? El Salvador has many transportation options available. Whether you decide to take a taxi or an Uber, rent a car and drive yourself, or hop on one of our colorful buses, you're sure to find a transportation option that meets your travel lifestyle. But there's pros and cons to each, so let's dive into the details. Taxis are common in El Salvador, and you'll find them lined up right outside the airport, ready to whisk you away to your hotel or Airbnb. Just keep in mind that the fare can add up, depending on the number of people that you're traveling with, the time of day, and how far away your destination is. For example, a ride from the International Airport to San Salvador usually starts at about $45, but can vary. It's also important to note that in addition to taxis, Ubers are a convenient transportation option available here in El Salvador. I do recommend that you book your transportation in advance because while there'll be many people outside the airport waiting to assist you, it'll be much more convenient to have somebody standing there with a sign with your name waiting to help you. Because stepping through those airport doors into the humid embrace of a tropical paradise can be a bit disorienting after a flight, especially while trying to recall those Spanish phrases you learned in high school, and it'll be much easier to just seamlessly transition into vacation mode if you've got everything prepared. Now, while taxis and Ubers are widely available in El Salvador, if you plan on leaving your hotel to explore the sites or take day trips, which I highly recommend in this amazing country, those fares can add up quickly. So it might be worth considering renting a car of your own for more flexibility and cost effectiveness. If you do decide to rent a car, you can totally do so through an international rental company like Hertz, Avis, or Enterprise, all conveniently located inside the airport. It is important to note that most of these rental agencies have a minimum age of 21 to rent a car and will charge an additional fee for anyone under the age of 25. And while insurance isn't legally required here in El Salvador, these rental agencies will most likely require that you get it. And honestly, that's probably not a bad thing. Here, minor fender benders are usually negotiated and handled on the spot and in cash. And if you aren't very comfortable with your Spanish, this could be a bit tricky. So it's best to have the insurance handy so you can just enjoy your vacation and avoid the potential stress. Now, if you're planning an extended stay or looking for a more budget-friendly option, you may consider renting a car from locals who offer vehicles in great conditions, fully insured, starting for a small sedan at about $25 to $30 a day, which is about half the price that you would expect to pay at one of the international rental agencies. However, it is important to note that many of these vehicles were at one point in time in an accident in the US and then imported into El Salvador and repaired here. As a result, many of them do not have all of their airbags and may have seatbelt issues. This is not typically a concern locally. However, if safety is a priority for you, you may wanna stick with one of the international rental agencies. Now, when it comes to driving in El Salvador, there are some important things to keep in mind. First off, you don't need an international driver's license. Your regular driver's license from home will work just fine as long as it's in English or Spanish. Driving in El Salvador is on the right side of the road with passing on the left, as it is in Canada and the USA. Seat belts are legally required for both the driver and passengers, though you will likely see locals riding in the back of pickup trucks. It is best to use a seat belt whenever possible. Driving in El Salvador does require a bit of a defensive mindset. Watch out for buses. They can be a bit aggressive and motorcycles tend to zip in and out of traffic frequently. And make sure to keep an eye out for pedestrians, dogs, and even cows crossing the road in rural areas. Similar to Los Angeles or any other major city, traffic in El Salvador can get pretty intense, especially around local peak rush hour, which usually starts in the mornings from 6 a.m. to 8.30, and then picks up again on the commute home at about five o'clock till 8.30 again. So it's best to avoid the road and plan your trips around these times if possible. And speaking of traffic, it is important to note that El Salvador is currently going through extensive infrastructure upgrades. So construction traffic is likely. Just plan ahead and enjoy the journey. And along the way, you'll find local vendors selling snacks and drinks along the highway, so you'll never go hungry. Now, if you're not planning many trips or looking for a more economical option, consider taking one of the local buses for a more authentic and affordable experience. Buses are widely used by locals and can take you to most destinations. The 
routes are extensive and the rates are extremely economical, starting at about 30 cents within San Salvador. And then they also have direct lines from San Salvador to other major cities like Usulután for only $5. However, keep in mind that bus routes here in El Salvador can be a bit difficult for foreigners to navigate. Locals here tend to learn the bus routes from a very young age and they can be extremely tricky for foreigners to figure out, unless you have a local here to help guide you. And don't plan on getting around on just your feet. Walking is not the main mode of transportation here in El Salvador. While places like Playa El Tunco and San Benito allow for easy walking within the community, this isn't the typical norm around the country. Generally, El Salvador isn't very pedestrian friendly. You're unlikely to walk to the grocery store or out to dinner. Most people here rely on vehicles. It's also worth mentioning again that pedestrians do not have the right of way, so look alive. Where should I stay in El Salvador? Let's talk accommodations and the best option for you and your family. The first thing to consider is location. Do you want to stay at the beach, the city, or sleep on a volcano? El Salvador offers a range of amazing options. Since the country is pretty compact, many activities are less than an hour's drive away. This means that you can choose to stay at one location as a hub and still get to explore all that El Salvador has to offer. Alternatively, you could decide to stay at a few different locations for a few days at a time so you avoid spending too much time on the road. The next thing to consider is what type of lodging you want to stay at, a hostel, a hotel, or an Airbnb. They all have different pros and cons. Hostels are great if you're on a budget and looking to meet fellow travelers. They're usually located in popular tourist areas and have common areas where you can meet other travelers and make new friends. The downside? Privacy might be limited and amenities may be basic. Hotels in El Salvador range from budget-friendly options to luxury resorts, but they usually come with additional amenities like pools, gyms, and restaurants, making your stay comfortable and convenient. Plus, you'll have daily housekeeping and front desk assistance should you need any help. On the flip side, hotels may be pricier than some of the other options and you may miss out on a bit of the local vibe. Airbnbs on the other side usually offer a more home-like experience, which can be great if you're looking for more space or traveling with family. You can usually accommodate between 8 to 20 people in one Airbnb here. There are many different vacation rental options here in El Salvador. You can find anything ranging from cozy apartments, entire houses, or even unique themed experiences, if that's your thing. And many of them come with private pools, which is always a plus. And they often come with kitchens so you can cook your own meals, though it is important to note that they may not be close to a grocery store. So it's important to stop at a grocery store prior to arriving at your destination to get all the supplies that you need. And just a heads up, most Airbnbs here in El Salvador will not come with hot water unless they specifically state that they do. This is just the typical norm. I don't have hot water in my house. Now, this doesn't mean that the water will be cold. Don't worry, it comes out room temperature. And in this tropical paradise, you're not gonna want it any hotter than that. Now, if you are staying on a volcano or in the mountains, on the other hand, that is something that may be more important to you as temperatures are a bit cooler there than they are here in the city or at the beach. No matter where you choose to stay, El Salvador has many fantastic options to make your trip memorable. And if you're needing assistance looking for a place, I highly recommend you check out vacationselsalvador.com. Carlos and I created Vacations El Salvador as the ultimate El Salvador travel guide because I truly believe that everybody can and should have an amazing vacation here in El Salvador. What should I eat in El Salvador? Literally everything. I always say the best and most delicious way to get to know a country is through your stomach, and El Salvador is no exception. Street food in El Salvador is amazing and one of my personal favorites. I highly recommend sorbete de caratón, minutas, mango twist, and elote loco. But it is important to know that street food can be hard on a first-time traveler's tummy. Nothing a quick trip to the farmacia for some emodium can't fix, but consider your own personal comfort level. I myself have a pretty strong stomach and never miss out on the chance to experience Salvadoran street food. We also have a variety of amazing local restaurants with a variety of cuisines ranging from Indian to sushi or pizza to fried chicken. And speaking of fried chicken, you might be surprised to find out that Salvadorans have a real love for this stuff. We have KFC, Don Pollo, Pollo Campestre, and arguably the most famous of all, Pollo Campero, which you're most likely to see and smell on the return flight home as many Salvadorans like to bring a taste of home back to their families in the States. And if you're craving a taste from home, you'll be pleased to know that many U.S. restaurants and chains exist here in El Salvador, like Starbucks, Subway, Taco Bell, Olive Garden. You can get your fix. The most famous dish in El Salvador is, of course, 
pupusas. Olacuenta on the way to San Salvador from the international airport is famous for their pupusas. But honestly, you can find amazing pupusas anywhere in El Salvador. There are typical restaurants here that serve them called pupusarias and you'll find them about every block or so. They're actually not easy to make, trust me, I've tried, but the women who make them are artists. They make it look so easy, and one of my favorite things about eating at a pupuzaria is watching these women work their magic. It's almost as much fun as eating the pupuzas themselves. And whatever you do, do not use a fork to eat pupuzas. They are always enjoyed with your hands. But pupusas aren't the only local delicacy. El Salvador has a plethora of typical food that I encourage you to try, like nuegados, yuca frita, pastelitos, oh, empanadas, so much more. Is anyone else getting hungry? Because I am. You can recognize local restaurants that specialize in typical cuisine because they usually have the word typico in their name. And it would be criminal not to mention mariscos. El Salvador has some of the best seafood in the world due to our proximity to the beach. The oysters and conchas, which are black clams, are extremely delicious, fresh, and economical compared to the U.S. But enjoy them at your own discretion. If you do decide to indulge, make sure to do so in front of the beach with a cold beer in hand. In El Salvador, it's common to say buen provecho, which means enjoy your meal to friends or even strangers as you pass by when you see them enjoying their meal. It's fun, friendly, and very Salvadoran. What should I drink in El Salvador? Now, when it comes to beverages, you have plenty of options to wash down these mouth-watering dishes. For non-alcoholic options, we have horchata, sabada, or ensalada, which translates to salad, and it's literally fruit chunks and lettuce and an apple juice base. Sounds weird, is amazing. Agua de coco is another great way to beat the heat. You can often find the stands on the side of the highway and it's served in a bag with a straw. In fact, many of our beverages are served here this way. And then there's Atoll, a warm corn-based drink that can be served savory or sweet. And Coca-Cola in El Salvador, like in Mexico, is made with real cane sugar, not high fructose corn syrup like it is in the US. So it tastes so much better. And it's often served in glass bottles, which just helps the experience. And Cola Chopin, or El Sabor de El Salvador, is a melon-flavored soda and is very Salvadoran. And you can't forget about coffee. El Salvador has some of the world's best coffee. In fact, make sure to bring back a few bags for your family and friends to share the love because this stuff is fantastic. Now, when it comes to water, I do not recommend that travelers drink tap water. Stick to bottled water, which is readily available. But it is important to mention that it is totally fine to use tap water to wash your vegetables, shower, or even brush your teeth. Here in El Salvador, you can find beer, wine, or even liquor at the grocery stores and gas stations, which all of my Canadian friends seem to be very impressed by. When it comes to local beer, some common options include Pilsner, which is widely recognized as El Salvador's national beer. It is a lager, and I would compare it similar in taste to Budweiser, but better tasting, in my opinion. We also have Brejia, which is also a lager beer and delicious. There is also Golden, which is the light beer. I would compare that one more to a Miller Light. And then we have Suprema, which is a Euro-style beer, similar to Heineken, I would say. Micheladas are a popular beer cocktail here, made with salsa negra or Worcestershire sauce. I, I can never say that in English. Lime juice, salt, and other spices. They are really refreshing. And here in El Salvador, we don't say cheers. We say salud. And speaking of liquor, we need to address some of the liquor laws here in El Salvador because even on vacation, it's important to drink responsibly. The legal drinking age here in El Salvador is 18. Driving under the influence is not only dangerous, it's highly punishable here in El Salvador. The legal blood alcohol level is 0 0.05, which depending on your weight, you could achieve with only one beer. If you are pulled over and found to be above the legal limit, you may be arrested for three business days and they may even share your photo and your blood alcohol limit on social media. An interesting fact though is that while it is illegal to drink while driving, it is not illegal in El Salvador to drink as a passenger. Ley seca or dry law is another interesting drinking law here in El Salvador. It is actually illegal to buy, sell, or consume alcohol the day before, of, or after an official election here. 
even if you're visiting El Salvador on vacation. How much does a vacation to El Salvador cost? I always say you can have an amazing vacation in El Salvador for as little or as much money as you would like to spend. We have many budget-friendly options as well as luxury options. It all depends on what kind of vacation you want to have. And what cost of living in El Salvador has seen some major inflation over these past few years, as has the rest of the world. It is still quite economical to vacation here in El Salvador compared to the US or Canada. You can expect to pay a fraction of the cost however you slice it. Fun activities like surfing, waterfall tours, or volcano hikes usually cost less than $50 per activity. And many tourist spots here in El Salvador are either free or only a few dollars. But creating memories with your friends and family here in El Salvador is priceless. If you're interested in some specific vacation numbers, I'd be happy to break down some trip examples for you. Just let me know in the comments down below and I can make a video for you on that. What don't I know about visiting El Salvador that I should know? Honestly, probably quite a bit, but that's okay. That's part of the fun of traveling and learning about a new location. But there are some insider travel tips that I'm gonna share with you that can make your vacation a little bit smoother. Medical and dental treatments are much more affordable in El Salvador than they are in the US or Canada. And most likely, you'll still be able to submit your expenses to your insurance company as an out-of-network provider. I do encourage you to contact your insurance company prior to traveling to find out what information they need to submit the claim. But you may be reimbursed for some, if not all, of your expenses. Same goes for beauty tourism. Treatments like hair care, nails, brow lamination, lash extensions, or even Botox are a fraction of the cost that they are in the US or Canada. Enjoy a beautiful vacation in El Salvador and go home looking and feeling your best. Many people and local businesses communicate via WhatsApp here in El Salvador. It's a convenient way to stay connected, whether arranging tours, accommodations, or just keeping in touch with new friends you meet along the way. Speaking of scheduling your time, it is best to visit small towns on the weekends, as many markets, bazaars, and events that they have organized will only be available on the weekends and are totally closed on the weekdays. Life in El Salvador just runs at a slower pace, often referred to as Salvador and time. It's quite frequent that people will be a little late for meetings or for events to start. My advice is just to go with the flow and enjoy the slower pace of life while on vacation. When it comes to cultural etiquette, Salvadorans are warm and friendly. They're some of the nicest people you will ever meet and will usually go out of their way to help you. A warm greeting and showing respect to locals will go a long way. And it is very common when you greet people here to give them a hug and a kiss on the cheek. One thing I noticed that not a lot of people know is that it's actually illegal for foreign nationals to engage in political protests or events. So do not join any marches or protests or you will be deported back to your home country. Let's talk about the typical house gecko. You are likely to encounter many of these little dudes climbing the wall wherever you go in El Salvador. They typically make a clicking noise that can be quite loud and, and off-putting at night if you don't know what they are. But do not be afraid. These guys are totally harmless and they actually eat the bad bugs and mosquitoes that can hurt you. It would be amiss to not mention that you will see many stray dogs in El Salvador in pueblos, at the beach, and even in some restaurants. Some public toilets may require a fee for toilet paper, usually between 25 to 50 cents, or other restrooms may be out of toilet paper. So just a common travel tip, I recommend people carry a small thing of tissues in your bag with you at all times. Speaking of toilets, it's important to note that while you can flush toilet paper in many locations in El Salvador, at many areas of the beach or rural areas, they are on septic and they ask that you toss the paper in the trash instead of flush it down the toilet. So just be on the lookout for the little signs that ask you to do so. Here in El Salvador, the tropical sun can be intense. Always wear sunscreen, wear a hat when out, and make sure to stay on top of your hydration levels. Heat stroke and dehydration can sneak up on you fast this close to the equator. I hope these El Salvador travel tips and frequently asked questions have helped you feel more comfortable about visiting El Salvador. As a special gift, I have linked a free printable PDF El Salvador travel guide with all of today's tips and frequently asked questions for you down below in my description box. Because 
I truly believe that everyone can and should have an amazing vacation here in El Salvador, and I wanna help you make that happen. If you've missed part one in my series, make sure to check it out. I will link it up above as well as down below in my description box. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos in regards to life and travel here in El Salvador. I hope you have an amazing day and safe travels.